All right, oh, dark 30, probably early morning hours in the uh, Cooper Road Mini Dungeon. Let's talk about uh, a little difficulty we've encountered here with the cylinder head. What we've got is a very um, high lift cam um, in combination with a one and a half ratio roller rocker set. And what we're having trouble with is getting enough lift um, at the valve. We're going to need right about a half inch. Uh, the cam specs out at 513 of lift at the valve. Now, allowing for a little bit of um, valve clearance, I'm just going to be right about a half inch, 499, 501, somewhere there, depending on where we set the valve clearance. Problem we're having is we've tried numerous seals. We can see we got four or five different types of seals here. Um, the problem is that we don't have enough enough valve lift before the bottom of our retainer tags the stem seal down here and um, we can see with a dial indicator on here we've got one whoops clear the head a little bit there we go let's read this about we'll just count the turns here so one two three four out oh, there's four and about 470 460 here with this one now that means that every every time the cam goes around, the bottom of the retainer is going to bottom out on the seal. And we've got here some very lightweight springs that we can use for testing to make sure that we've got all the numbers, uh, all the math working out correctly. And in this case, it does not. Um, we had the guide here. Here's what the standard guide looks like. Let's see, where's the camera on this thing? I'm holding it. You see, it's got a big chamfer over here which sort of matches what the underside of most of the stem seals look like. And you can see what we've done here. We've machined the ones on this head. We've removed this chamfer. So we've taken off probably about 50 to 75 thousandths to try to gain some room at the top of the guide to clear our valve seal. And, you know, we re-chamfered it a little bit. We used a Dremel and kind of made a nice rounded edge here. We don't want any sharp corners. So, this is the same trick I used on my own cylinder head, obviously with not quite the cam we're trying to run here. But still, it was nearly half inch lift, and that's been working for years. Um, and here, the, just the numbers didn't add up right. For some reason, you know, we tried to find the longest valves. These are the, these are the, the rim flows. Um, very expensive race valves. They measure about you know, 3.6 the spec is 3.57 so these are a bit longer although they do have if you look at them carefully here's the intake valve they have this little raised rim around the side so if we measure them carefully from the flat below this rim we are at 3.57 which is the specification for the longer valves used later on the Cooper S had 3.53 valves and that was a weakness of the cylinder head that tended to crack the later heads are all thicker, all use the 3.57s, which is what we have here in the rim flows and the big valve sizes. I don't know if it's the combination of this head or that these valves have a fair amount. You can see there's, you know, they're not, they're not super thick here, especially if you consider there's that raised edge. And so that's where we are. Uh, right now, despite all of that, I've, I've ordered some special uh, Subaru seals, similar to what I used on my own uh, engine years ago due to this shaved down guide situation here to uh, they're the type that are if you look at the inside of these they're rubberized they don't have they're a metal can the metal outside and they don't have the little raised o-ring inside that wants to locate in these grooves you know, there's a groove right there now if it's going to locate in that groove then despite taking down the guide we're not going to we're still going to smack the retainer so we spec these special seals that just have a rubber kind of a rubbery inside surface and a metal outside <coughs> so they sit very flush and low on here but despite that you know we've got a lift of about 470 before it hits it and we need another 30 thousandths uh, probably 50 to 80 to be safe really to get it to a situation where you're not hitting that seal on every rotation that'll just take a beating you'll see these little springs that are uh, built on up here that uh, keep the um, the seal tight they'll just leave they'll break off from the repeated um, contact impact with the bottom of the retainer so that's where I am I don't yet have a solution um, I may have to have these valves 
machined to lower them, um, in other words, make them go further up into the combustion chamber, hence making them longer up here, gaining a bit of room for lift, and um, maybe even be able to dial in the spring pressures a little. Speaking of spring pressures, what we ended up with was um, the 526 springs, or these anti-coil bind type, these are the lighter weight ones than what I was hoping to use. Um, these are the mini spares C dash, oh geez, what are they? Um, AEA 526 and 527. These have too much seat pressure. We're about 140 at the seat, which is just overkill. We don't want to put that kind of weight on a new cam. So we're going to have to run the lighter springs, and then ideally, we would run this until the engine was broken in, maybe a few track sessions or a few races, whatever, and then switch to the heavier springs once the cam is nicely broken in so we don't risk damaging the cam lobes with a super heavy spring right off the bat. <coughs> so a number of things we're dealing with here. Um, what I'm going to try next, I'm going to see if there's room to machine these valves down. If we can gain maybe 30 thousandths, um, that'll give us the clearance to the seal. But all this stuff takes a bit of time, and uh, you know, every time I take the machine shop, it's a few days to get it, uh, get it done, get it back, and see what the result is. So I'm going to keep at it. I'm trying to knock this thing out. I know that uh, the racing season is uh, is going on here, and I'm doing the best I can to make this all work, so that uh, we have something that's going to hold up and uh, and be an enjoyable engine. All right, I will uh, continue these updates and uh, hopefully have a solution here in the near future for this current issue.